so first of all very good good evening to all of you and especially gsts team for extending this opportunity for students like us to learn and therefore to engage on various ideas and one such is this and i think ma'am has already drawn uh, a cue to what the topic is like and obviously has contextualized in a way so as the topic suggests ideating nationalism in the era of globalism thinking through the teachings of tagore so of course uh, the very idea of nationalism how it unfolded in india and how tagore fits and unfits into this whole paradigm uh, when we are talking about his idea of globalism when in a context of no nationalism uh, and where we see a rise of cultural nationalism uh, so these are the few sub themes that i'll be going to glance through and therefore take you to uh, from there to what the topic is i think all these become an important part while we discuss the whole idea of nationalism and rather indian nationalism um so well uh, i think aap log sab nationalism kahin na kahin dekhte hain wo chahe tv screens pe ho i know i am aware of the fact that the kind of nationalism or heart thumping or that you see i have put a picture as well uh, ya fir wo cricket match ke taraf ho yeah fair when we are just talking about g20 india taking the presidency and how we are rather ideating and identifying with the whole conception of indianness do idea of nation jo hai wo itself is an abstract but we somehow identify to it and therefore it's important for us to sneak peek to view this complex formation and therefore coming together of this notion that has affected our day to day life well i think it's very important therefore in this larger picture to understand tagore tagore his perception of nationalism was kind of different distinct from the one that we are perceiving and rather living as a literary figure and as a thinker uh, through his amazing literary works where, whether it's gora ghaire baire kabuli wala for that matter and of course uh, the robindra songeet and the robindra nritya which has influences from various parts of the world which people like nilanjana mukherjee have described as reflection of tagore's internationalism well this notion of nationalism of tagore of course is distinguishable from the parochial kind of nationalism that is in discourse in india rather today therefore as i put forth this whole topic and rather unfold the whole idea um, we would know that how we trace the nature of indian nationalism and it is important to see the various trends within it and how tagore tagore fitted into it and therefore in today's context we are there talking about the exclusionary kind of nationalism and and therefore we see how tagore's idea of globalism would then fit in well before understanding tagore and then coming into tagore uh, let's understand the whole paradigm of indian nationalism how was it distinct from the european one though as a whole idea or a conception it might sound as if nationalism of course was borrowed from europe but we had our own invention according to the context so when we compare it to the european nationalism and as we talk about how ernest glenner's conceptualization of nationalism was which was completely based upon idea of modernization particularly linked to the various very process of industrialization which provides a source source of cultural cohesion creating a sense of homogeneous identity and therefore a creation of this pool of homogeneity where if you are participant of that pool you belong to it otherwise you are excluded from it and therefore uh, part chat part strategy has also called it way of print national capitalism rather through which a formation of national language could be seen and therefore this idea and this language provided a common identity people who were able to identify with it were able to find their own sense of nationalism towards it and and therefore as we see that capitalism and nationalism have conjoined together therefore people uh, and rather scholars like lenin have called it that colonialism is the highest form of capitalism why because this rise of competitive capitalism was something which flourished into what nationalism is today 
So let's understand what the whole idea of Indian nationalism is. So it was basically an struggle against the oppressive British rule, rather was an anti-colonial sort of a nationalism that was created by the angst of the, uh, the as I said, of the various measures and policies in terms of socio-political spheres of the East India Company. Then we, when we look at the very nature of the society or the existing society that was diverse and heterogeneous compared to what the West was. So here we have the amalgamation of various kinds of people, various kinds of languages, which was not the case if we look at in Europe. Now coming to the third and, and perhaps the last point in this presentation is the fact how in India we were still talking about internal assimilation during the national movement. However, when we compare it to European nationalism, there they were still talking about external consolidation. Now this external consolidation could be exemplified if we look at the way Italian uh, Italian nationalism and the consolidation process and the German consol consolidation process uh, unfolded. So here, we, while we were still talking about internal assimilation of various kinds of people through the struggle. Um, now, this whole nationalism or rather Indian nationalism through the national movement also had various branches and trends and nationalism emerged as a dominant political movement in the second half of the 19th century, which drew its inspiration and the underlying ideology from the cultural and intellectual movement, which was the result of the modern churning that rather happened in the socio-political sphere. Now we have again these two branches, that is the reformers and the revivalists. So while the former talks about having and therefore bringing about the social changes into the practices that were existing. And rather, these were dogmatic practices, whether you would say sati or this, and about education. So they were now talking about the fact that how one could bring change in the social sphere, sphere which could then percolate into forming a modern sort of a nation or a modern society rather and therefore confirming with the nationalist views of the West, whether it is Raja Ram Mohan Roy, Ishwar Chandra Vidya Sagar, Jyoti Ba Phule, and Savitri Bai Phule. Now coming to the second branch, which was which were the revivalists. Now, um, they have been called revivalists by people like Shekhar Bandhupadhyay, who vaguely refers to them as Hindu revivalism, you know, where when uh, our whole nature of India, that is when we talk about our very modern ideas and I would say heterogeneous and uh, inclusive ideas. So here we see coming together of several streams of thoughts and groups. Now let's not forget the fact that the past or the past ideas or past uh, disruptions of, of communal or ethnic kind were ignored. They were uh, readily present there. But what Gandhi was able to contribute was the fact through non-cooperation, civil, disobedi civil disobedience, and then the Quit India movement, a larger call for independence, which incorporated not just one identity, but a larger sort of identity. And therefore, he created this notion of nation that was superior to any other kind of identity. So if you are a Muslim, if you are a Dalit, if you are a woman, if you are a child, aap sab ke liye Gandhi ne ek idea banaya of India, jahan pe aap sab ek tarike se identify kar sakte the. Well, and you know, one could say of Gandhi's idea of oceanic circle, and well, this fitted into this uh, whole concept of civic nationalism, where the community is actually imagined rather than a cultural one where it is just about zeal and uh, a lot more homogeneous sort of a thing, thus negating to a very large extent kind of ethnic and communal politics. Um, and therefore, I think uh, Gandhi has been able to build this kind of nationalism and rather mass movement. So mass movement that started from the zeal and violence and from the very idea of exclusion to Gandhi bringing in this whole sense of civic nationalism. Now from Gandhi, let's move on to Tagore. So Tagore was someone who gave this title of Mahatma to, uh, to uh, Mahatma of title of Mahatma to Gandhi rather. So 
As we talk about Tagore, uh, Tagore, of course, cannot be eliminated or considered divorced from the whole context. Because as people like Sabasachi Bhattacharya himself has said, that how Tagore evolved as a thinker, as a nationalist thinker rather, and as a literary figure into early and to the later phase. Now, the early phase was the phase of uh, where he supported Swadeshi movement, boycott of foreign goods, social reconstruction program to attain self-empowerment. And therefore, when there was, this was a larger uh, picture, there was a time of Bengal partition and he was kind of agitated and rather a lot agitated against what was going on and the shenanigans of the state during that time. So therefore, as we come into how Tagore's ideas involved, outbreak of the World War I was a precursor. And how was it a precursor? He believed ki jo horrors hai of the World War I would have explored and would have opened people's mind to understanding the kind of bloodshed, the fear and the exclusion that the mankind has faced. And therefore, he wanted to have a universal movement which is more inclusive in nature, which is not uh, running on the wheels of materialism, competition, rivalry and uniformity seeking fervor. And uh, as I have already exemplified about Gora and Ghare Baire, where he has problematized this whole idea of homogenization and the homogenizing tendency that is germane within nationalism. So, how does Tagore, India and globalism fit in? Let's just get into that for a few seconds. So, India, according to him, should resist the rising tide of nationalism that was sweeping through, uh, through Europe and which it feared would compromise India's distinct uh, identity and history as a culture and rather um, a culture which was based on uh, diverse societies, diverse uh, diversify the people, whether it's languages or whether it's culture. So now nationalism has a very germane sort of a thing, which uh, germane sort of an idea that is very linked to it, that is the idea of superiority and which extended into colonialism and imperialism and therefore subjugating the other. Now, in this case, in rather in this context, the subjugating other happens to be India. And therefore, we see how this whole conception of domination and subjugating can unleashed into this unparalleled sort of a damage to the world system that time and therefore to peace. Therefore, he talks about adopting the principle of Swadharm Sambhav, which is deference to all religion, which can be extended to the political domain for a state for peace, peaceful coexistence among nations and also within the national boundaries. Now, um, I think uh, it is very important that as diversified communities, we live with peaceful coexistence and it is for the state and the governments to ensure such policies and such orders that we can have peaceful coexistence in true sense. And it is this spirit that he envisions for the world that which has not been broken up into fragments by narrow domestic walls. Now, these fragments are not just physical boundaries that we are talking about, but this is also an emotional and uh, I would say spiritual and also a social boundaries that has been built over the period of time as we see the advent of neoliberalism and with it the advent of neo-nationalism. Uh, you know, the whole motto of India taking the G20 leadership and Vasudev Kutumbakam, which in literal sense means the entire world as one family. And I think this whole idea and this whole motto does not just remain like a punchline, but it actually gets integrated into the world order, but also in the politics of domestic, uh, rather the domestic politics of India as well, whether it's as individuals, whether it is as governments or whether it's as communities. Now, fetishization of cultural identity and pride is something that is very germane today. I think as we talk about integrating in a very uh, neoliberal and capitalist sense with one another through trade, etc., etc., uh, fetishization of cultural authenticity is something that is very 
uh, you need to as pk datta uh, mentions about that we are just talking about integrating with economy and therefore competition remains and which has now percolated into the whole uh, socio economic sphere and now we are just talking about this what really is patriotic so what might be patriotic for me may not be for you and if it's not for you then you ostracize and you ostracize which is just a way of otherization within that whole nation modern nation state so within a nation you are again otherized so this exclusion is something uh, that is that was very unacceptable to the person that tagore was and his conceptualization and now people like uh, gurpreet mahajan have turned it like how there is a shift from civic nationalism and a benevolent kind of majoritarianism to an exclusionary one now what does benevolent majoritarianism here means benevolent majoritarian basically suggests of the fact that as we talked about uh, the very nature of indian national movement in a very initial phase where though we were talking about uh, a nation which was having all kind of diversity and all kind of people but still it was giving superiority to one and then we saw a shift to the very civic nationalism and the formation of a modern indian state and then today when i think we have well established as a nation state we are again seeing an advent of exclusionary kind of a nationalism so this is what it is and then when we at the end as i talk about globalism so what is this globalism it is about living with differences cooperating humanity and mutual coexistence with each other which as i have already mentioned becomes very very important for us as individuals and communities and therefore for the governments to ensure that it's remain there and also the very idea of spiritual unity now tagore highly talks about the fact of spiritual unity and mutual transformation um mutual transformation is i would say a very modern idea uh, compared to the time that tagore was in he was basically talking about positive transformation between two cultures rather two or more without losing their own originality or distinctiveness uh, so he was not at all propagating the whole notion that was going on at that time of parochial uh, nationalism which was just talking about demeaning the west just throwing away the west if uh, you know if the europe has uh, colonized you you just throw it away you just hate it no this can't be the whole idea as humans as communities it's important that you embrace embrace the good of both and therefore live with idea of mutual transformation transforming each other for the sake of the good so well uh, as i sum up i hope i have been able to make some sense to you and give you reflection of tagore in today's context and how tagore's idea of globalism and internationalism rather could be a solution for the various adversities and crises that we as communities and nations are facing and why and how governments um, and the states of the various the community i mean i um, various nations can take up these lessons and therefore base their politics on that is very very important and therefore bring into play a harmonious sort of an existence for its citizens um so thank you very much i think uh, i have been able to make some sense and uh, hope aap logo ko acha laga hoga to have me there speaking Uh, thank you thank you so much ms priyanshu and congratulations for your talk you give indeed a very good presentations like the way you have explained the ideas of tagore from a pre independent india to like global and contemporary india and i guess our, our listeners and our audience is also very enthusiastic and they have posted a few questions for you so let's take them So the first question is from uh, Mr. Shivanshu, and he is asking basically uh, that nationalism is linked with the imperialism. Do you think so? Uh, yes. So uh, I think thank you for the question. First of all, so very much linked. So I think I have already mentioned of. lenin uh, when he says that how capitalism is the highest form of colonialism so i think uh, 
few of the cues that you can get for that answer itself is there however so as we talk of imperialism itself is an extension to nationalism so nationalism as i said is the very idea of superiority homogenization and you know a time when the west thought um, with the advent of capitalism through industrialization that it was needing more goods and more exploitation to be done to other parts of the world uh, so nationalism again they thought of themselves and the enlightened and the most and the well known so these two ideas rather and the two processes conjoin together to what we see the extension of colonialism later on and the way um, india and african and a lot of latin american countries have gone through it so i think uh, that would be my answer okay well answered now the next question is from mr mohit and he is asking according to you how much proportion of people get affected by political thoughts of nationalism of tagore at the time um i think uh, that's a well placed question i think in today's context so um yes i think it's important you know somewhere or the other in our lives we do use that uh even even if you know one would say that in a larger context and in a very fervor mode you would say that oh we'll just dump that idea because it just feels too idealistic i don't think that could be any way possible because when we say that we are living in a global like his world you are actually uh, somewhere going into his ideas and actually assessing that so i think uh, some way or the other you are there but i think it's always better to accept it that and to become a better person because even if we say it's a utopia or ideal i think these ideals and utopia set a benchmark for you to so that you can through that process access that idea and become a better version of yourself uh, yeah okay uh, the next question is by ms shiba and she is asking like rabindranath as a literary figure how he contributed um, his through his ideas in national movement or in nationalist movement yeah so his uh, ideas i think uh, you know uh, i would suggest of you to just go through some of his um, picturizations and i think few other directors have done it i think the picturizations the way it has been done shows the very cosmopolitan nature of what tagore was talking about whether it was uh, the movies made by satyajit ray on tagore or whether it is things like chokher bali and in fact as a literary figure the way tagore writes in gitanjali he actually wrote in his uh, mother tongue that is being bangla and then uh, a lot of his literary work rather in fact his very famous work what we are talking about nationalism was something that he wrote uh, initially uh, a lot of parts in bengali and then it was further translated so it shows you that how tagore as a literary figure himself rather lived through what he said so being local and rather talking about this whole global concept okay uh, now for last question i would like to uh, call mr ajay gupta uh, mr ajay can you please unmute yourself and ask your question because i could see like your question is pretty long so you could explain it in a better way okay <laughs> okay shailendra so uh, mr ms danshu actually he was just reading other day the sudesh chandra he said that gandhi was pretty much inaccessible to the masses because of his frequent use of gujarati and to some extent to the uh, use of the ram rajya the concept that he had propounded so do you think that tagore's name is pretty much inaccessible from the larger audience and the larger masses i i feel so how do you promote this and uh, how do you see this and how do you promote these concepts that you have presented today to the larger masses and what could be done i can say um so what i have said today uh, i think when i talk about globalism or accepting each other i don't think as a concept you might not have uh, you know how tagore or you might not have attached the name to tagore but some way or the other we are uh, i think i have already said some way or 
uh, in one of the answers that you some way or the other you are living and you are hearing to it uh, but i think it's very important that we again reconfigure tagore and talk about him so you are right in a way that not everybody knows and talks about it it is only us people who are able to you know get access to all the literature and all the reading uh, and have this enthusiasm to read but but i also think you know that ideas uh, may not uh, you know the few ideas we just get attached to tagore that everybody talking about gitanjali uh, that tagore was but not really literally knowing what was in, into that very uh, famous uh, work of his but then also i think uh, you know this idea is not just unique to tagore i mean tagore himself borrowed this idea from various other parts so uh, very idea of uh, i would say vasudev kutumbakam was a very upanishadic value which we are just talking about even if you don't say where should they put him come uh, when you just say that you know we are all one i think as kids and as every i think most of us would have just known uh, at least in literary sense if not in true senses that uh, you know brother and sister and i mean all of you used to do your school prayer so i think that in a very colloquial sense was there but again uh, i would like to assert this point that yes we really need to reinfigure these values through these uh, thinkers in today's time uh okay uh, thank you so much ms priyanshu you tackled uh, all the questions very well now there is last question from my side and this question is actually experience based like what is your like what was your experience with gsts and like what would you like to say like uh, on the on the basis of your experience uh, i think it has been a very fruitful one though um, you know this 20 minutes presentation is not just a 20 minute thing there's a lot of preparation that goes into it and the preparation allows you to read more and more um, and therefore access i mean uh, the kind of literature that one goes through whether online whether offline is unimaginable i think in the whole of one year i don't think that one would go through this much of literature while preparing but this one month or the 15 days time that one gets to prepare for gsts is something that allows you uh, to literally think and therefore introspect so each day one i would read something and the next day i would reflect back so this was something uh, that gsts uh, taught me and therefore i'm really thankful to the platform thank you so much uh, ms priyanshu and congratulations for your talk now uh, moving ahead it's time to call um, our guest of honor dr manisha roy ma'am again for uh, her final remarks so ma'am please come forward and give us your final remarks over the talk over the topic and over uh, this particular initiative as well ma'am please uh to begin with i think gsts is an excellent platform it's a platform where young minds can you know articulate themselves they can express themselves they can critically engage with each other on various topics and various topical issues so i think it's an excellent platform it's a great initiative and it's a weekly endeavor i did not even know about it and i'm going to encourage my own students to come and join and you know make it a, a very fruitful engagement for them as well so i think it's a great great initiative and kudos to the team who's organizing this and i i think you know we should have such engagement and to the question that ajay was talking ajay gupta where he said you know how could we make uh tagore more relevant before i come to priyanshu i'd like to address that you know tagore address you know touches all our lives because uh, you know we all rise and sing jangan man so we, without even knowing it you know tagore is a strand that sort of touches our lives even without our knowing knowing tagore so perhaps you know there is a need to engage with with tagore much more through these talks through these cultural and academic engagements that we have you know in schools and in colleges and you know we should celebrate tagore you know we should have a tagore festival perhaps we should get together and you know like we have these days where we celebrate gandhi or ambedkar we should have these days to celebrate tagore tagore you know because he is a voice he, he 
He's a voice that needs to be heard. He he provides us today with the alternative narrative that warns us against against egregious nationalism. And why it's this is a very very important um, concept today is because you know the forces of neo-colonialism, the forces of neo-nationalism are sweeping our world. And you know there is a lot of deprivation, there is a lot of domination in the world, and we need saner voices. We need voices that would provide us healing touch. So um, I think you know it's it's about time that you know we started to revisit the concept of nationalism and revisit the ideas of Tagore, which make real you know they really make sense today. You know uh, he was a clairvoyant when he warned us against egregious nationalism, uh, against the othering you know of na- othering which nationalism brings in. So I think it's it's an opportune time to discuss the ideas of Tagore and, um, you know, platforms like yours, you know, provide an opportunity to students to discuss, to engage with Tagore. And I think it's an excellent, excellent initiative. Coming to Priyanshu, I would like to congratulate her because, um, you know, her um, uh, deliberations, her reflections were quite all-encompassing. She's explored the entire gamut, the landscape of Indian nationalism. She's talked about the idea of Indian nationalism, discussed its various strands, She's uh, also talked about and dwelled on how Indian nationalism is different from, say, Western nationalism, how, uh, you know, the trajectory of nationalism has unfolded from pre-independence to uh, to contemporary times. Uh, and she has discussed that in great details and then, you know, explained us the various nuances of Tagore's thought, discussed about his various writings. She's talk, talked about Gore Bayre. She's talked about... Uh, Gora and how you know uh, the idea of um, you know the Western nationalism, which was based on competition, which was based on an antagonistic othering of the uh, the other, which was exclusionary, is different from say our kind of nationalism. So I think Priyanshu, it was a very very good effort, and you should you should um, you know pu- probably not stop at this. You should publish this paper. Uh, I think you know you should really um, do that. Now um, coming to what. You know, why should we talk about nationalism today? That's an important question that, you know, we must dwell upon. And, you know, uh, why it is important is because in contemporary times today, you know, what we are seeing is an era of new nationalism. I began my opening remarks very briefly with the idea of new nationalism. And, you know, why? what is new nationalism doing? It is being bred by a very new breed of aggressive demagogues and autocrats. Throughout the world, there are these autocratic and autocratic leaning governments, you know, which we see on the rise. And, you know, the neo-nationalist concept, chahe aap Brexit dekhe, chahe France mein Le Pen dekhe, chahe Brazil mein aap Bolsonaro ko dekhe, chahe Hungary mein uh, dekh lehen aap, chahe Poland mein dekh lehen, chahe aap Turkey mein uh, Endogram ko dekhe. So, or authoritarian regimes, China mein dekhe, Russia mein dekhe, North Korea mein dekhe. So, what is happening is, that most of these neo-nationalist movements, parties, governments, they're characterized by some combination of right-wing, anti-immigrant, nativist, anti-science, and anti-globalist sentiment. And what are neo-nationalists doing? They're supporting and often reacting to their own sense of waning power. Who could feel correct power vain kar rahe. They're on the loser's side. And there is a decline in their social status. There is a decline in economic opportunities. Or is decline ko demagogues, uh, us desire ko feed kare ki, you, know, you are superior, we are going to you know, give you back your past glory. You've seen what Russia mein kya ho rahe. Russia mein Vladimir Putin jo hai, he's infatuated with asserting Russian power. And uh, uh, he wants Russia to give a place in the world order and to revive its old claim. You know, Russia, Tsarist Russia mein Russia ka, ka place hota tha, jo Soviet empire tha. We will preserve and bring back uh, lost territory, just say Taiwan. Hai. They are, uh, you know, the kind of aggressive nationalism that, that is being demonstrated by these two um, uh, leaders, or I would say autocrats, you know, is, is something that we should, the world should be very wary of. But we must also pause and think about what fuels this rise of nationalism. Why? Aaj kyun hai ki globalization ke era mein, jahan hum cooperation ki baat kar sakte the, jahan pe nationalism ki baat kar sakte the, wahan hum ek new nationalism ka rise dekh rahe. So according to me, there are three accelerants, three main karan hai mere hisab se, jo ki fuel kar rahe hain is new nationalism ke rise ko. 
The first is the rapid pace of globalization and the economic uncertainty that it produces. A globalization ka the promise hai ki it'll give you a prosperity, but it is also giving you rising inequality. Or kyunki inequality bohat zada hai, yaha pe ocean of uh, poverty hai, or ek island of prosperity hai. To ye uh, jo hai ek insecurity, ek fear produce kar raha hai world mein. Dusra jo accelerant hai, wo immigration ka pace. जो इमिग्रेशन का पेस है वो बहुत माइंड बॉगलिंग है पूरे वर्ल्ड में और वो पूरे वर्ल्ड में एक ग्रेट डेमोग्राफिक चेंज ले आ रहा है कंट्रीज में डेमोग्राफिक चेंज जो वो एक हिस्टोरिक लेवल पे आ चुका है और वेस्टर्न इकोनॉमीज जो हैं वो इस इसका ब्रांड बेयर कर रही हैं बहुत सारे कारण है इसके लोग जॉब्स के वजह से डिसप्लेस हो रहे हैं जो लोग वॉर की वजह से डिसप्लेस हो रहे हैं लोग क्लाइमेट चेंज की वजह से डिसप्लेस हो रहे हैं कई सोसाइटीज डिसफंक्शनल हैं इसलिए लोग डिस्प्लेस हो रहे हैं तो जो डिस्प्लेसमेंट है और उसकी वजह से माइग्रेशन हो रहा है ये भी एक कारण है कि न्यू नेशनलिज्म का का राइज हो रहा है क्योंकि लोग फ्योर कर रहे हैं कि हमारे जॉब्स चले जाएंगे हमारा दे विल कम एंड ग्रैब आर जॉब्स दे कम दे कम आर टेक आर पोजिशन सो ये भी एक फ्योर को फ्यूल कर रहा है जो तीसरा एक्सेलरेंट है और मेरे हिसाब से खतरनाक सबसे खतरनाक एक्सेलरेंट है वो है द एबिलिटी ऑफ न्यू जनरेशन ऑफ पॉपुलिस एंड डेमोग्राफ्स टू यूज टेक्नोलॉजी एंड सोशल नेटवर्क्स टू प्रमोट दे फाइंड अलाइज एट होम एंड अब्रॉड एंड अटैक देयर एनिमीज और यू नो क्रिएटेड परसीव एनिमीज सो द ईज एट सोशल मीडिया एंड एंड वर्ल्ड and they added to the uh, power of these um, you know demagogues these political movements that they they forth and right wing populist uh leaders or demagogues you know they bypassing conventional media and they're building followings jaise president trump the wo twitter ko kaise use karte the you know that was beyond beyond anyone's imagination so uh you know we would think that the, the i i would think these are the three main um reasons why you know which uh, which are sort of fueling new nationalist forces and that you know uh makes me think that you know tagore is more relevant today because his brand of nationalism is very fundamentally rooted in the question of what is it to be a human being so his nationalism is a very humane a very benign a very benevolent nationalism it is embedded in the values of cooperation it is embedded in the values of coexistence and it sort of transcends boundaries and it you know talks to um, humanity at large and it is meant for humanity at large and you know this tone of nationalism was is reminiscent of the nationalism that that we had you know at the time of independence the the kind of nationalism that gandhi was able to weave together you know it was an inclusive nationalism it was an emancipatory nationalism and it it led to the foundation this is the core of our republic you know india is the people of india so it is a inclusive a syncretic nationalism that india must stand for at the goes to for he opined that nationalism was derived from the nation state which is nothing but embodiment of western ideas of capitalism and mechanization he believed that these ideas were intrinsically against the innate tradition of self autonomy against pluralism against religious tolerance and that's why we must have an our own notion of nationalism which borders on nationalism and that would build a world you know which is you know with talks of a healing touch which which is built on cooperation which is built on brotherhood universal brotherhood and uh, to my mind you know now is an opportune time to start that conversation to start that engagement wherein we can work, build a world which is based on the goals idea of syncretic nationalism and to the and i that brings me to the end of my uh, ideas on tagore and nationalism 